Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. For today's video, I do want to talk about the Dallas Mavericks because Shams uh, just tweeted this not too long ago saying free agent guards Isaiah Thomas, Lance Stevenson, and Monte Ellis worked out for the Dallas Mavericks today. Sources tell me and John Crawfish. Um, Thomas appears to be in great shape, sources say, as he works to make an NBA return. And straight up, man, like, I thought this was kind of an important note to talk about. Now, before we get going on today's video, if you guys don't mind leaving that like, remember, man, slow time of the year, that like really does help grow the channel and everything. And, of course, subscribe new to the channel. Um, also, earlier today, I did post an NBA 2K video of putting one prime player on every single NBA team. It was a really good video, so check that out if you did not get a chance to. Um, but, yeah, man, the reason I really wanted to talk about this is because... I wonder if it's kind of getting to the point, are the Dallas Mavericks towards the end of the offseason here trying to save face and maybe getting a little bit desperate when it comes to Luka Doncic? Just because uh, looking at the NBA offseason report here for the Dallas Mavericks, not moving myself there, my bad. Um, I think they kind of took an L this offseason, man. Like, I straight up think that the Dallas Mavericks took a big time L. Like, uh, we all know last year... The big time rumor was that Luca was not happy with the direction of the team management. Uh, we do know there is at least some sort of drama between him and Kristaps Porzingis. It appears that Kristaps, though, just doesn't like the idea of being a second option, which unfortunately, man, like when you play the way that you did in the playoffs, that's not really your choice, especially when you're playing Luka Doncic, too, um, who's an absolute beast, right, man? So... Yeah, because during the offseason, or the current offseason that we're in, they got Tim Hardaway back. I thought that was fine. Like, Tim Hardaway had, like, a career year for them last year. That was okay. Uh, Boban, you know, Boban's fun. Good chemistry guy and everything. Sterling Brown, okay. Uh, Reggie Bullocks, I mean, should be a nice catch-and-shoot three-point shooter playing off Luka. Uh, they got Moses Brown, who I think could be a good young center. He showed some real good flashes for the OKC Thunder. Um, and they lost Josh Richardson, who I don't really think was, like, a great fit on the Dallas Mavericks. Anyway, he really has not been a good fit since the Miami Heat days. But uh, you look at that, and, and that's it. That's really all there is to show for the entire team. So you go back here, man, you know, looking at the tweet and everything. I mean, Isaiah Thomas, Lance Stevenson, Monte Ellis, you know, Isaiah Thomas, I really hope he does get a job in the NBA. Like, I feel like he just has that work ethic, and I, I feel like it's a good opportunity to maybe – um. You know, I, I don't know, man. Maybe maybe a low risk, high reward move, which I guess technically all this stuff is. You know, Lance Stevenson. Um, it seems like he's only good on the Indiana Pacers. And then Monte Ellis. I have no idea the last time I've heard of Monte Ellis, man. Like Monte Ellis, I remember him from like damn like two K negative three or something like that. So I do want to go over here to Basketball Reference, and I just want to see what these guys have been all about as of late. Like, what's like the last time these guys have played basketball? We're gonna start with Isaiah Thomas right here because we do know that uh, he did play basketball. You know, last season for the Pelicans, I believe, was. Let me shrink this down here, guys. My apologies, man. Sick editing. There we go. There we go. Okay, so last season, Isaiah Thomas, seven points, two assists, one rebound per game. He played, it was only three games with the Pelicans. And uh, what else did he do? Man, he shot about 25% from three, 38% uh, estimated field goal efficiency. Uh, and I, I think about that, too. I try not to think think too much about those numbers because let's be honest, he was coming off like injury and he was rusty. It was only three games of an entirely new team, and uh, I also don't think Isaiah Thomas was a great fit with the Pelicans to begin with, especially with a guy like Stan Van Gundy, who I just don't think is the greatest coach in this era of basketball. Um, so I guess you look at the season before with the Washington Wizards, you know, twelve points, four assists per game. That was in about forty games. Uh, realistically speaking, man, it's been it's been a minute since he's really played. A complete NBA season but I think the beautiful thing about that is the last time he really did play one he was an all-star he averaged 29 points per game like nearly 30 points a game man that's absolutely crazy to think about and while it does seem like it was a long time ago it was about four years ago which uh you know for well the issue with Isaiah Thomas is that so much of his game is reliant on his athleticism. If you guys watch some prime, you know, that 2016, 2017 version of him, uh, you can just see the way he gets to the basket and uses his body and everything, especially when you're a shorter player like myself too. You know, you really got to be athletic and pretty relatively healthy, which is why I'm personally a garbage basketball player. Isaiah Thomas and I are like the same height. So yeah, man, uh, I, I can see where the injury really derailed things. So, I mean, he would be interesting, I guess, to see on the Dallas Mavericks. I just, I don't know, man. I don't know. And then... Let's go ahead and look at uh, Lance Stevenson next. I think it, he wasn't too long ago that he played last. Uh, he last played for the Lakers in 2018-2019, averaged 7 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists per game. So that's kind of what Lance Stevenson is known for, is being kind of like that do-it-all. Um, I almost call him like the Draymond Green of shooting guards, which is probably a bad comparison because he's actually a pretty decent 3-point shooter. Um, 
but yeah so he played for the lakers at about 16 minutes per game so the per 36 on that let's check that out real quick here 16.7 rebounds five assists and uh once again it's not like he's old he's gonna be like 30 so i honestly don't mind this as a fit just as a different type of guy to put next to luka Doncic that can kind of make plays not only for himself but for other people like that's very important especially in today's nba uh having kind of like that multi-purpose you know multiple type of like guards and ball handlers primary ball handlers on a basketball team right so and even the season before that playing for the pacers uh nine points five rebounds three assists per game that was in about 23 minutes right so yeah uh throughout his career he was all i mean i would say his numbers have stayed pretty consistent uh, i would say out of all three of the players I would say Lane Stevenson probably makes the most sense for like low risk, high reward type of thing. Uh, if he can really work it out, you know, for the Dallas Mavericks. And then finally, we have Monte Ellis. Like I said, man, I do not remember the last time Monte Ellis has played basketball. 2017? Was he? I guess that was four, four years ago. And uh, yes, and that was on the Indiana Pacers. So that season, 2016 2017 season, played 74 games at nine points, three rebounds, three assists per game. Now, I remember monte mostly from the golden state warrior days because he was a cheat code in nba 2k like he could make him run up and down the court bro and nobody would ever stop him right uh but then obviously they chose curry over monte ellis and it really seemed like since then you know he had some decent seasons i guess looking at like with the milwaukee bucks and everything but even that too it wasn't like at the time it wasn't really leading to w's because if you remember correctly the bucks uh were like the worst one of the worst teams in the nba at that time so it's a lot of inflated stats and i just don't think i mean he gotta be about 35 now right 35 36 years of age uh, I just don't know if I really see it in the cards for Monte Ellis, but at the same time, it'd be kind of fun too to see what he could do. And he does have some experience with the Dallas Mavericks. I don't know if he's got like that connection with like Mark Cuban or something. Maybe that's why he was really given a chance to work out. Um, I'm not really sure, man. But looking at Fanspo real quick here, you know, and just look at the overall roster. I mean, what can we really expect from the Mavericks going into next season? Because I, I'm going to assume. I mean, I don't even know what they need uh, as far as, like, those three guys. Because I feel like the guards, they're actually fine with. Because um, you have Luka at point guard. You're probably going to have Tim Hardaway at the two. Dorian Finney at the three. Chris Tops at the four. No, no, no. I, I think I would probably do Luka, Tim Hardaway, Reggie Bullocks, Dorian Finney, and then Chris Tops at the five. I would probably roll with that out there, man. But uh, I don't know. I, I just I, I was pretty disappointed overall with the direction this team went in the NBA offseason. Um, I still think there was something that could have been done with Kristaps Porzingis. He is eating up 19% of the salary cap. So, yeah, man. I mean, okay, if, if I could redo the offseason for the Dallas Mavericks, which might actually be kind of a fun video idea for an NBA 2K series or something like that, maybe once the season gets going a little bit, uh, I, I would have probably said that I, I still would have loved the idea and I know when it comes down to it, like, they don't really get the choice here because the other team has to agree. Man, I would have loved some sort of CJ McCollum, um, Chris Thomas Porzingis type of trade. Just something centered around that. I feel like Damian and Luka both need two different types of guys to play with. And I feel like those separate guys on the separate circumstance would have been good. Because for me, the way that, like, CJ plays, plays pretty similar to, like, Damian, where it's like, no, you want, like, a different skill set. So, so you put Chris Hops over there, and then CJ scoring, I mean, he would just excel playing off Luka. It would be literally the perfect fit in my book, man. But, uh, I don't know if that's really going to be the case. Uh, you guys let me know in the comment section below. What more do you want to see this Dallas Mavericks team do? Do you think they're going to make any more big-time moves? Do you like the idea of them bringing on, you know, Monte Ellis in 2021? Do you think Isaiah Thomas should be given a chance? Because even from the point guard standpoint, I mean... You know, I really like, uh, what's his name? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, Jalen Brunson. So, Tyrell Terry, I think, could be given a pretty good chance. I just feel like some of these cases, it's like, hey, why bring on that guy when you got some other guys out here and the guys you're bringing in just kind of come off as desperate. So, that's all we have for this video, man. Uh, be sure to drop that like, subscribe, and do the channel. Also, check out my second channel, Extra Crispy. I just did a video of grading every NBA team's best dunk. And, uh, yeah, that was fun. So, that's all we got. Peace out.